Hi, this is JB from Not the Lights Over Arkham. This time I am playing Luke Robinson in my next episode of The Unexpected Courage. We are playing the Dream Eater Cycle and I decided to make actually two uh, different videos of the Dream Eaters because it's split into two uh, separate campaigns. So in this first one I will be playing Luke Robinson in the uh, sleeping side or the dream quest side of the campaign uh, campaign cycle and in the waking side I will be playing uh, Tommy Muldoon. We are playing the dream eater cycle. I have only uh, used cards from uh, two core sets and the dream eaters deluxe box. So let's look at Luke Robinson's deck. We have uh, Many of the staple cards from the core set, we have uh, two flashlights, two magnifying glasses, these are to help us investigate efficiently. Luke has a decent intellect, so even without any spells that help you investigate better, Luke can manage in true solo, especially with only flashlights and magnifying glasses. Uh, of course, we have one fighting spell, which is the shriveling. Uh, Luke has a poor um, combat value of two, so no point in trying to boost that in any way. Just try to stick with the uh, fighting spells and other than that, escape the enemies with your gate box. Then the ally I decided is Dr. Milan Christopher. This combos really well uh, with the Arcane Studies, which boosts uh, willpower and intellect, which are really uh, important for a mystic who has um, access to Seeker cards. So good ways to use your spells and investigate. Then. Uh, because Luke can do all kinds of funny stuff with events. We have two barricades which will come into use maybe later uh, with, uh, with the gate box. You can go into your uh, dream gate and uh, play a barricade from there to a connecting location. So you could block access to an enemy quite easily with that and run away from it. Then of course we have two drawn to the flames, uh, two emergency caches, two ward of protections and two working a hunch. Uh, working a hunch is also quite useful for Luke uh, through the gate box because you can go to your dream gate and pick up a clue from a connecting location and all reveal locations are connected to the dream gate. And as usual we have the for a box skill suite of two gods, two manual dexterities, two perceptions, and two unexpected courages. The random basic weakness for this deck uh, ended up being Silver Twilight Acolyte. It seems I'm pulling that one quite often, but it is what it is. And um, let's see how this deck performs in the A side of the Dream Eaters campaign cycle. So, uh, as you can see, uh, we don't have a encounter deck at the start of the scenario. This means that you are just racing to get uh, through the first occasions into the um, enchanted forest or uh, yeah, enchanted woods so that the real scenario can begin. Um, we also have to make a decision. Uh, we are, as we are a, a mystic, we are seeing the mystic dream at the start of the scenario, so we can search our deck for a mystic uh, card and play it. And I've decided that it will be the Arcane Studies. This is because um, it will boost our intellect and our willpower, which are our two main um, stats for Luke. 
so with that uh, we can better clear the first few locations of clues and get get moving as fast as possible but i think that's enough of the uh, deck and the setup uh, we have the high doom threshold of 19 for the start of the scenario but as long as we are on steps locations we add uh, an extra doom during every uh, mythos phase but we don't draw a uh, encounter card because there is no encounter deck so we really need to hustle through the first locations but let's see how that goes so let's get started so i have reshuffled the decks uh, after i search the arcane studies and of course we have to pay, uh, pay for it so i only have three resources at the start so let's get our opening hand and the gate box is uh, all, always um, in play at the start. So not a really great starting hand. Uh, we will reshuffle that. So okay, we get a working a hunch, manual dexterity, perception, gods, flashlight. I think actually. Mm, we are keeping all of it. We could play the flashlight, then we can uh, work in a hunch later. And the uh, perception lets us draw more cards. Guts is. Well, I'll, I think I'll uh, reshuffle Guts. We probably won't need it at the start. Or actually, uh, these two are actually quite useful when we get to the next Cavern of Flame. And we have to parlay, so I'm, I'm keeping all of this. So an, a bit strange hand to not play and that many assets or anything like that, but we will manage with these. The flashlight was a good pull because that's really useful at the start of the scenario. And uh, first action, I think I'm just playing flashlight down. So. Uh, the flashlight has three supplies. Then, uh, second action. I will investigate and uh, I think I'm saving the flashlight for now. I'm investigating uh, three versus. Uh, I'll go to five versus one. Uh, this cancels everything else but uh, all the fail, so we really want to succeed. And it's a minus four, so good thing we boosted it. Uh, we succeed, we draw a card with the perception, we get a replacement perception, which is really good. Okay, and uh, we get this clue. Last action, we will move into the Cavern of Flame. So you cannot enter the Cavern of Flame unless all the clues on the 70 steps have been discovered so we have done that so we'll move here forced at the end of the mythos phase each investigator in the cavern of the fl of flame takes one damage and uh, we actually advance so if an investigator enters the cavern of flame immediately advance each investigator loses all of their clues we lose that clue Put the set aside Nasht and common tar enemies to play in the Cavern of Flame. Your slumber grows deeper. Add one skull token to the Chaos Pack for the remainder of the campaign. So, we'll do that setup now. We have uh, uh, Nasht and common tar over here. Let's just place them over here. And. Uh, we add one skull token to the chaos back. Then uh, that is it. So no enemies except these, and they are uh, aloof, so they don't attack or engage. So we go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card. Oh yeah, and um, take one horror for each card in your hand, in excess of five. 
so we didn't have any excess cards because uh, we had four so we're fine so we draw a card we get the emergency cash we gain one resource that is the first turn let's go to the next turn uh, we add a doom and then we add an extra doom so two of 19 no encounter card so we're just heading to the um, investigation phase but before that we have to take one uh, damage from the forced effect on the cavern of flame so first action we'll start parlaying with these guys so we can get out of this place i will parlay first with nost and i'll use the manual dexterity for that so i'm uh, parlaying five versus three so we are two up hopefully that is enough just checking the skulls are minus x where x is half of the cards in your hand so if i pull a skull it is a minus two uh, we pull a zero so this parlay is done we draw a card we get a uh, ward of protection which is nice so last is uh, flipped over and we add Nast to the victory display. Second action, we'll do the same for Common Ta, but this time we will use our uh, willpower. So I'll play the guts. So I'm testing 6 versus 3. So minus 3 of better. And it's a minus two. If you fail and this is an attack, well, it isn't, and we didn't fail, so we pass and uh, common tie is parlayed, and we flip it over and put it into the victory display. Okay, so if neither Nast nor common tie are in play, immediately advance, so we advance. We lose all of our clues, uh, we put the 700 steps. Base of the steps and the enchanted path locations in play. Your slumber grows deeper. Add one skull token to the chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign. And now we have an objective. If each investigator is at the enchanted path, immediately advance. So we need to get through the next few locations fast, as fast as possible. So we have the 700 steps. We have the base steps and we have the enchanted path. And that is it. Just add some connectors here. So I'll put this as we can't move before we have completed the required uh, steps on the on the cards. But we can move over here, and that will be our last action to move over here. So there is a one clue here. Uh, when you leave the 700 steps, take one horror for each card in your hand in ex excess of three uh, fast triggered ability. Choose and discard one card from your hand. Okay. So that was our last action. And uh, no enemies. Uh, we go to upkeep. We draw a card. Uh, another working a hunch. We gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a couple of new doom here. And uh, I think uh, because we have the work, uh, working hunches, we can really fast forward through this to save time. So uh, I'm uh, doing a fast action and playing the working hunch to just grab this. So we don't lose any actions. Then, uh, let's see. If I move, move, I have one. Okay, so I'm playing the emergency cash to get some cards out of my hand and get some resources. Then I will move. And we, don't, we have only three cards in hand, so we don't take any excess damage, uh, horror from this location. We are at the base of the steps and again I will 
Fast action play there for working a hunch. To grab this clue. And okay, after you enter the base of the steps, if you have at least one card in your hand, just uh, willpower X, access the number of cards in your hand. If you fail for each card in your hand, you must either take one horror or discard that card. So uh, I'll do that now before I'll actually play that. So we are testing willpower 3. Uh, with four, I really don't want to lose any of those cards, so I'll use the Arcane Studies to boost my willpower up by two. So I'm a five, uh, uh, six versus three. It's a zero, so we're fine. Then I will play the Working Hunch. Grab this clue. And now we can uh, move over here. So... Checking. Uh, you cannot enter an enchanted pot unless all the clues on the base of the steps have been discovered. So we have discovered everything from there, so we can move here as our last action. So we did really well. We only spent uh, three turns to get down to the enchanted pot, so we have plenty of time to uh, do the latter part of this uh, scenario, but let's advance as we get into the enchanted path. So, um, each investigator loses all of their clues. We add another skull to the chaos bag. We remove each step location from the game, randomly choose six of the set aside enchanted woods locations, put and put into play, remove the other copy from the game. Shuffle all of the remain remaining set aside scenario cards except for Laboring Dog and Run for Archer. Expert Dreamer to form the encounter deck. From now on, investigators throw cards from the encounter deck during each middle space as normal. And we need five uh, clues, and only investigators at the enchanted pod may spend the required number of clues as a group to advance. So. I will pause the video do the mid-game setup at this point, so I'll be right back. Okay, so mm, we have done the mid-game setup. So we have the six randomly chosen enchanted wood locations to play. We have built our encounter deck and shuffled it, and we are ready to go. And uh, we added the third skull token into the chaos pack, so there are three skulls now. In the chaos back so it gets a bit harder if we have a lot of cards in hand but I think we can keep our hand size low from now on uh, that is all of my actions we'll go to the upkeep because there are no enemies we draw a card uh, we get a reveling which should help us if we run into multiple enemies and we can't keep running away from them and we gain one resource so uh, that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We had a doom. Uh, we are at 5 of 19. And the first encounter card of the game is uh, Prismatic Phenomenon. So, uh, Revelation put Prismatic Phenomenon into play in your threat area. The first time you perform one of the following actions draw, resource, or play. Each round it costs one additional action. After you successfully investigate a location, instead of discovering clues, discard the prismatic phenomenon. Okay. So, I mm, think I'm just. Uh, could investigate here to get rid of this. But is it a waste of an action? Uh, we. Could actually ward that away. Well, I think we're fine keeping it. So, I think I will investigate here and I'll boost my skill up by two with the perception. I'm not using the flashlight because I want to save it for the really tough uh, situations. 
So we are testing um, five versus two, and it's a minus one. So instead of discovering clues, we get rid of this, and we succeed. So we draw a card. We get another ward of protection. Second action. Let's move into a chanted wood location, and we'll start from here. So it is the Great Stone Circle. Post after this location is revealed, spawn the set of set laboring gog at this location. Well, of course. So we immediately get this nasty guy, which is not really nice. So it engages us. And. Uh, I think we are leaving it over here and um, escaping into our gate box. We really would have wanted to get this clue first, but I think we circle back here later. So, uh, as a fast trigger ability, I'll use my gate box to put uh, use the dream gate over here. So we move into here, and this guy is unengaged from us. Last action, we'll actually play the shriveling. So now we have a way to fight enemies if we run into them. And that is our turn, enemy turn, nothing happens, this guy can't move in the enchanted path, and this is not connected to anywhere else yet, so it just stays there. Uh, we have to, uh, at the end of the investigation phase, we have to move to a reveal location, so we'll move there. This goes away. Uh, we'll go to upkeep, we draw a card, we get barricade, which could actually be helpful to stop this guy from getting to us. And we get in a resource, so that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We are at, at 6 of 19, doom, encounter card is uh, the crawling mist. Uh, okay, hunter, massive. Increase the difficulty for you to attack or attempt to evade the crawling mist by one for each card in your hand with an encounter card back. So it is zero at this moment, but that, that is an uh, uh, annoying enemy to get right away. So we are running into trouble with all of these enemies. Let's see if we can manage this. So it's massive, so it's here. I then uh, it is not an elite, so and that is not elite, so the barricade will actually help us quite a lot. Okay, first action we will evade this guy. We are evading 3 versus 3, so this is not an easy, easy thing to succeed. Minus 2, I think we're trying again. Actually, I'm, I have to use one of the wards to boost it to 4 versus 3. So we have a better chance of succeeding. And we get a plus 1, so this guy is evaded. Last action we'll move to... Let's move over here. Okay, Enchanted Woods. Strong Trapdoor. Uh, while you are investigating this location, it gets plus one fraud for each card in your hand, so... We should get rid of some cards. And actually... Uh, this is connected, so to stop this laboring gog from coming to 
Hiras, I'll actually. Oh, we don't have actions to play the uh, Barricade just yet. Okay, so we need to use the gate box again, which is annoying, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, let's go to the enemy phase. This guy hunts here. We'll use the gate box to get out of here. So it just moves here, doesn't get to hit us. And uh, that is it, so uh, upkeep this ready, we draw a card and uh, detach from reality. Okay, well, we flip this over. Uh, if Dreamgate uh, is already in play, flip it over, otherwise search. Okay, and in either case, disengage from each enemy engage with to the move to the green gate. Okay, well, I think we are hanging around here for the next turn. We can't get uh, past this uh, investigation check. Uh, after you successfully investigate green gate, flip it uh, at the end of the investigation phase. Set green gate side out of play. Luke Robinson is here. Move him to any real location. Take two or. Just checking one thing. Okay, so we can't play the barricade. Okay, well, we gain one resource, and that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a Doom, we are at 7 of 19, and uh, encounter card is Deep Slumber. Put Deep Slumber in the play in your threat area. Your maximum hand side is reduced by 3 and is checked after each time you draw one or more cards. Double action, discard this, okay. Um, this isn't that bad because we're trying to keep our hand size low either way, so it's uh, 5 now. But we really need to try to get out of here. So I'm actually using the flashlight and I'm uh, spending 2 resources to boost my intellect by 2, so I'm 5 versus 4. And uh, actually using the board of protection too. So six versus four. And it's a zero. So we get to flip this over. Second action will move down here. And uh, last action will play the barricade here. So these can't move in here. Okay, so non-elite enemies cannot move into a touch location. Uh, when an investigator leaves a touch location, discard barricade. So we'll just stay here for, for this turn. Uh, no, no enemy movement or anything, so we'll go to upkeep. We draw a card, get unexpected courage, and gain one resource. So that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We add a Doom, encounter card is Obscuring Fog. We add that shit to our location, so the Shroud is now 3. Well, uh, we are using the flashlight to investigate for our first action. And we'll use the unexpected courage. So it's a skull, it's a minus 
x x is the half of your number of the cards in your hand so zero so we succeed we can this blue the obscuring fog goes away and uh, uh, double action I'll get rid of this because uh, we would don't want to move out of here on this turn okay so enemy phase nothing happens the barricade is still here so we go to upkeep we draw a card we gain guts and we gain one resource so that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We had a doom, so we are nearly at the half point, so 9 of uh, 19. Encounter card is Dreamer's Curse. Test willpower 5. For each point you fail by, take 1 damage, to a maximum of 3 damage. For the purposes of uh, counting icons committed to this skill test, intellect uh, combat and agility icons count as matching icons and uh, will power and wild icons count as two matching so I'll just commit the guts to this test I'm testing six versus um, eight versus five it's a minus two we succeed and we draw a card we get uh, arcane studies this goes away Okay, so uh, we need to hit this guy. I'm, I'm actually thinking of going to the gate box and uh, hitting this guy from there with the shriveling three times to kill it. And uh, we'll actually do that. So I'm using the gate box. So, uh, we we'll put this in the play, move there. This goes away. And uh, first action, we'll use the shriveling to shoot the rolling mist. And uh, we are fighting uh, four versus three. I'll commit the arcane studies to the test, so we are five versus three. So, again, the skulls are zero, so they are fine. Those, but of course, we take the horror. Uh, minus one, we deal two damage. Second action, we'll shoot again. This time, we are spending one resource. So, we are uh, five versus three again. It's a skull, we take a horror, but we deal two damage. Last action. Shrivel uh, again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot. I can't do this. Like so. Let's back up a bit. So my first action was to move here, engage this guy. Then I shoot it twice. And. Uh, After that, uh, we are here, so yeah, because I, I can only do the. Oh, I can only uh, use events to show that uh, connecting locations with Luke Robinson's ability, so my. I, I forgot I can't use the spell asset, so we move there, uh, fire twice, and that's our turn. Enemy phase will use the gate box now to escape here so that guy doesn't hit us. And uh, that is our turn, so uh, we get the cordon resource. Another barricade that's really useful in a moment. And uh, that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Okay, um, we are a doom. We are at 10 of 
19 encounter card is uh, furtive zook engage with the investigator at your location with the lowest well this just fizzles because uh, we are at the dream gate so this can't enter there and uh, that is the mythos phase we'll go to investigation phase so first action we'll just move back here uh, second action we'll use the I will use both of our resources to boost our intellect and use the shriveling. So we are fighting six versus three. It's a zero, so we defeat this rolling mist and it goes to the victory display. And uh, last action will. Uh, we actually don't want to move because this guy could uh, move in with us, so just uh, drawing up. I'll gain a resource. Okay, that's our turn. This laboring gok um, doesn't do anything. So, go to upkeep, we draw a card, emergency cash, and gain one resource. So, that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom, and counter card is a Love of Yggiroth. Uh, so, parallel hidden revelation, secretly add this card into your hand. You cannot commit cards to skill test with an odd number of total of skill icons on them. Discard a player card with an even number of total skill icons from your hand. Discard this card from your hand. Okay, well... That doesn't really bother us at the moment. And first action will just move over here. Enchanted Woods uh, Mystical Forest. As an additional cost for you to leave this location, you must use and discard one card from your hand for each clue on this location. Okay. And uh, I will investigate using the flashlights. And boosting uh, with arcane studies, so I am uh, five versus two. Minus one. Grab this clue. Last action will move back to here because uh, this isn't connected. Well, it doesn't matter. We still need to find three more clues to get out of this mess. Uh, enemy phase, nothing happens. Upkeep, we draw a card. We find uh, Dr. Milan Christopher and we gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add another Doom. Encounter card for this turn is uh, Somniphobia. Test. Intellect 5, uh, willpower 5, for each point you fail by check on horror to a maximum of 3 and uh, can commit cards, so check, so uh, we don't have any double, so we can't commit anything to this test, so I'm actually just testing it, we have plenty of horror to take, so it's a minus 3, so we take 3 horror. Okay, uh, first action will move here, uh, Enchanted Woods, uh, the moon, moon Tree, after you enter this location you must either take two horror or lose all of your remaining actions. Well that, that is uh, painful. Yeah, um, we'll take the horror. And then uh, I will discard. Let's see if this is, this isn't connected. So we'll we can stay here for this turn. So I'll uh, discard card with an even amount of 
icons to get rid of this. And uh, I will commit Dr. Milan and spend one resource to investigate here. I'm investigating uh, 5 versus 3. Minus 2, we we'll grab this clue, so we still need two more clues. And that is our turn, and uh, the laboring gog starts to move. Let's see. Just need to. These are connected. Hmm. These are not connected, so okay, the cock moves from here to here, I think. Trying to find the path to us, so is this connected to anywhere else? No. Okay. Uh, I think that's that's okay now. So uh, upkeep, we draw a card, magnifying glass, we gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We had a doom. Let's count now. Uh, we have a uh, five, a uh, thirteen. So we have uh, five more turns to go. Encounter card is. Lost in the woods, each investigator at an enchanted woods location test will power 3. Each investigator who fails must lose one action and take one horror. I'm testing uh, will power 4 versus 3. So, plus 1 we pass, so that is good. Fast action will play the magnifying glass. Two actions will move over here, and last action will play the barricade here. That is our turn. Enemy face, the guck can't move back here. Uh, we draw a card, we get the whole rosary, and we gain one resource. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we add a doom, 14 of 19, and counter card is. In conspicuous Sook, any connecting location. I'll put it over here. Swarming two. So uh, it has hunter swarming two. When in conspicuous Sook is defeated, cancel all excess damage and move any of its remaining. Yeah. So uh, we just ignore this guy. Spawn it over here. Okay, first action we'll uh, investigate here. I'm investigating with the magnifying glass, so 4 versus 2. Uh, each card in my hand. Actually, I'll gain a resource. I'll play uh, Holy Rosary. And now I'll investigate for my last action. So I'm investigating um, 4 versus 2. And uh, minus two, so we we'll grab this clue. We still need one more clue, and we'll just stay here so these guys can't move in. So enemy face, nothing happens. Upkeep, we get drawn to the flame, and we gain one resource. So now we just need to find a location with the clues and grab the clue and get to the enchanted path. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We had a doom, and counter card is deep slumber. Uh, doesn't affect us, we don't have that many cards in our hand, so let's just put it into play. Uh, first action, we'll move over here. Second action, we'll move over here.
Okay, so luckily this isn't connected, so this guy doesn't move. Um, and uh, same here, so this guy has to go around. So we're safe, and I think uh, I will, as my last action, just try to naturally investigate. So I'm using the Aken studies. Investigating uh, 4 versus 3. Auto fail. Well, wasn't meant to be. Enemy face. Uh, this guy hunts here. This guy hunts here. Upkeep. We draw a card. Shriveling. Gain one resource. That is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We add a doom. Uh, we have. Actually, I'm counting. 6. Uh, I think we have 15, 5, 5, uh, 16 of 19, so we still have a couple of turns uh, left. Encounter card is, furtive sook, um, okay, so it spawns on my location. It is uh, swarming one, but this location adds one additional card, so swarming two. That doesn't uh, sponsor us that much. We need to e evade it and grab the clue and move, and then we can advance. So, I just mark this guy. Uh, first action, we are evading. I'm evading 3 versus. One plus one, so this whole bunch is evaded. Uh, second action, just to be sure, we are drawn to the flame. Grab this, drawing an encounter card. Dreamers eclipse. When you initiate an investigator, you must either take one or okay, location gets plus one draw. Doesn't affect us at all. And last action. Uh, we'll move here and we advance. So, only investigators at the enchanted part may spend the required number of clues as a group to advance. And we can choose either resolution 1 or resolution 2. So, that was the Beyond the Gates of Sleep with Luke Robinson with only two corsets and the 3 meters deluxe box cards. Uh, I think that went quite well. Uh, we were able to uh, run away from all of the enemies, except I, I decided to kill the problem mist because that is a victory point enemy, and also it is an annoying enemy to have that early in the latter part of the scenario. But I think this went pretty well, so... Um, Look forward to see how Tommy Muldoon does in the uh, Waking Nightmare scenario in my next Unexpected Courage playthrough. But hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.